Всім привіт новопробулим. Я прошу вас зайняти свої місця, бо ми зараз будемо заважати спікеру. Дівчата, сідайте, будь ласка. В вашій увазі буде демонструватися доклад UX Union Model Installation and Configuration. Артем Дмитрієв, будь ласка, вітаємо. Good morning, everyone. So um, I would like to talk about most annoying part of Drupal, how to make it user friendly. And not only for developers, but for end users who, who are actually using Drupal. Because developers, they use to Drupal to develop, but uh, they are not real customers who do, who visit the site every day, who tries to edit content, who tries to uh, make it better and uh, to attract more users. So uh, first, one slide as always about myself. So I am web developer at 1x Internet. This is a company, Drupal agency in Germany. And uh, my personal skills uh, i'm module maintainer so we have um, with my company the four modules that we support a style google maps advanced insert view group media and commerce recurring shipping module and as i told in the beginning my goal is to make drupal more user friendly so it's easy to use not only for developers and a couple of words about our company. So we have three offices. One is the main office headquarters is in Frankfurt am Main. Then the next one is in Berlin, also in Germany. And we have one more in Conil de la Frontera. It's in Spain, just on the ocean coast. So it's only 100 meters away from the ocean. And in total, we have more than 25 employers. And the biggest feature of our company that we have more than 10 nationalities. So there are people from Belgium, Pakistan, Ukraine, as me and my colleagues from Iceland, Hungary, and all other countries. And we diff really like enjoy doing our stuff together, as you can see on the other slide. So if you want to be a part of our company, you can just visit our site. We hire a lot of people and we want to see you in our team. So, and the most, the biggest question that we ask ourselves every day, it's how to make Drupal more user friendly. Because when the project manager gets the call and asks like, the client asks how I add content because like there are so many buttons, there are so many menus and so many uh, links and they just don't know where to click to go to what page and whatever. So as a developer, I also more interested in the modules itself. So I'm not the client. So how can we get that the module installation is more easy? So what we have now, how you can install the modules. So the first option always for all developers is Drush or Drupal console, depends on who likes what. And then the last one is through admin UI, but it's mostly for clients or for users who have no experience with CLI. And my topic is how to improve this third step. First of all, I would like to mention that now mostly all the modules should be installed with Composer anyway. So this is already the biggest obstacle for normal people who just have no experience. And, but it's really now needed because a lot of, other, a lot of contrib modules depend on some third-party libraries that can be uh, pulled only with Composer. But for this, we have some alternatives. So thanks to Ludwig module, 
you can check, it's a really nice one. Uh, the Boyan created it from uh, Commerce Guys. And also Composerize. It's also a nice one that helps you to avoid using Composer in CLI, because if you have no experience or you have shared server or whatever, or you just don't want. So what is missing in all these methods? So the biggest part that is missing is there is no interaction at all. So what question are you asked when you install the module in Drush or Drupal console? Do you confirm that you want to install? That's all? Or maybe also asks like some dependencies, yeah, if you have. So what, what do all users expect? As I wrote in my abstract in this, for this session, so like everybody, I think first OS was Windows. Anyway, before you become like skilled one to use Mac OS or Ubuntu or any Linux, we were all Windows users. And we all get used to this screen. So when you first click on the exe file, you see this. It asks you, at least it asks you some questions. Maybe you don't do like a lot of configuration, but you have this, like setup mode, I don't know, complete, custom, typical. Then you have some other questions. Maybe they look stupid for you because you don't know what it means, but at least it asks. And you have like con control. And then like some install button and whatever. So there is an obvious question. Why the most powerful CMS has nothing to offer to users about this? So now the mainstream of all conferences that we have, and Dries always in his Dries notes and all key speakers says like Drupal is for enterprise. And I ask why? Why Drupal is only for enterprise now? Why you need a Drupal agency to spend one hour of your budget to install a module? I just attend the one meeting, uh, one session about Search API and how it's easy and simple to configure, but it was 40 minutes and the guy was explaining really thoroughly how you do it. Yes, it's simple when you know what to do, but for this you need to attend this session and to listen for 40 minutes how you do it. And then again, logical question, why? Why just the Search API module can't help you to use it just out of the box? So what are the obstacles? Why, why we can't do this so easy? So first of all, as I also suggested to have this uh, feature in Drupal, on Drupal Slack, the first obstacle was, yeah, we will do this in U UI, and what about CLI? What will you show when you install the module with Drush? So you, you don't have the forms, you don't have the multiple questions. Then the next obstacle is this complexity of the modules and solutions, because sometimes one module that does really simple stuff depends on a lot of other modules. For example, I don't know, C tools for views, it was in Drupal 7. And now commerce, for example, not a simple module, of course, but it depends on a lot of other modules, like inline entity, form, just entity, and all others. Also, the next one is the opportunity <clears throat> to make a lot of things in separate ways. So there is no standard one that says, like, you do this, this, and this, and you achieve this. It's always a lot, of, a lot of ways to achieve the same goals. And that's why it's also bad for developers, because you can do dependency injection, or you can call the Drupal container statically if you want. Of course, somebody says that it's bad, somebody says that it's good, but there is no standard way. Also, there is no standard way how to install modules. Somebody says, you, we have to do this with Composer. Like, Composer is obligatory. And <clears throat> contrary on the Drupal org, you see all the starballs still. And you also can download and install, and then also lose your dependencies. And it would be a madness for you. 
And of course, there are no decisions made, no initiatives arise, and nobody even raised the question to do this installation wizard. Just to help everybody to use Drupal easily. So, do we need this so that uh, UI and CLI gives you the same user experience when you install or configure the module? Or any other extension? Maybe the team also has some settings, or, or I don't know. And the first one, beginners and non-skilled users always use web UI. It's the most simple and most obvious question. You just go, click extensions, and then find in the list your module that you somehow installed, maybe with Composer, maybe with Tarball, and then just click, and so easy. Uh, but when you have some skills and you use CLI, will you use it, this form, in the admin UI? Of course not. And then, if you are so skilled to use Drush or Drupal console or any other methods how to install the module, you don't need this wizard anyway, because you know how to do this and you will configure it because maybe you're a developer or just a very skilled user. But to make it in CLI the good experience, you have some obstacles, like it can handle only one question at a time when you install, so it's not really interactive. You ask. CLI asks you a question, you answer, then it asks again, you answer, so it's not so user-friendly again. And you can't use any forms. And <clears throat> then there is an obvious decision. This installation wizard should not be required. It should be optional. So why not just provide an option for non-skilled users to install it without forcing everybody to use it? So, there are several methods how developers can help users to configure and install their modules. So, first of all, it's right in documentation. Of course, it's really important. It's uh, like at least readme file or some tutorials or video tutorials with screenshots or documentation on Drupal.org. But, of course, it's always doesn't cover everything. Then, next one, it's providing better UI and uh, adding hints to module configuration pages and messages. For example, like Webform does, it, Webform module. They have everybody everywhere this small icon with question, and you hover it, and it says like what, what it does, what this input does what the other one does, and they have the messages always everywhere, so you click and you see what you did, so it's really nice also. Then, again, the Search API module. The Search API module provides the default configuration module, so you can install just default module, and it will <coughs> give you some example installation, but it will be fully functional, so you can just start and use it out of the box. Then, of course, you can install some profiles. The profiles give you the variety of modules that are really fine-tuned for what they say. So you don't have to configure a lot because it's already done for you. And of course, the, first, the last step, but not the least, is to provide the interface with easy steps like installation wizard. So what are the pros and cons of each method? So, documentation. Yeah, it provides some basic information always about the module. It helps module maintainers to show their contact details so you can somehow contact them and ask for feature requests or whatever. It's not only for the Drupal org where you have this issue queue, but for any other modules and any other libraries. But, as always, it covers only some general use cases that can be relevant to your task. So, for example, I used uh, one month ago, the commerce module just to have the price field. I am not using the whole commerce, but I want the price field. So uh, then it's always, not always up to date, because 
the developer created the readme when he initially uh, pushed the module, and then after 10 versions, it's still the same, but it has more features, more uh, stuff to achieve from this module. And the biggest problem of all readmes and tutorials is that developer writes it on its own. So it writes in really technical-oriented language. And for example, to explain just normal users, just yeah, install the search API backend. Or configure solar. What is solar? I don't know. Then, next one is better UI and hints. From the web forum solution, yeah, we see that the proper labels and descriptions and all these uh, small tooltips and hints help a lot. <clears throat> Second of all, you can just make HTML elements that are really bad. For example, multiple select list. You just see this box, and then you need to press control, and then tick every other option. It's so annoying, and it's so bad. And also date pickers. But there are also cons, of course. Uh, sometimes you just can't find the configuration page. So first of all, when I install the module that I don't know, I just go to route in YAML file and see what paths I need to use to <laughs> configure the module, because sometimes you just can't find it in this administration menu. And again, the other problem is that these hints sometimes also are written in two technical language. So it's for a normal user, it's you see the uh, stream, but you don't understand what it's about. Next one is modules with default configuration as example of Search API. They help us to uh, use the module just out of the box. So you install the Search API default configuration, and you see already the index, the um, Search API server, and then you just can go on your site and just use it. Maybe for some basic features, if you use the site only for a couple of content types, it's really easy, and you just use it, and maybe don't need to reconfigure it again. But again, the uh, negative part is always that it covers only simple solution, because it's just default configuration. And for real configuration, if you want to use it, then sometimes you have to just like completely change what it was done for you. Um, the next solution is using the modules from profile. So our company also does uh, some profile solutions. We do this DGov profile that is used for governmental stuff in Germany. And we do, of course, all the pre-configuration just how the client wants. And of course, they, they don't need to configure stuff because they gave us requirements, we did the module, and it's already done how they want. Then the profiles can push the configuration changes, and with updates, you can update it, like with Thunder distribution, and also DGov has it, and Vardot, and all others. But again, if you just want to use some module from some profile, then you have to uh, depend on it. So it's not really convenient just to have, I don't know, the iframe paragraph, and then you, you will use the module from some profile. So it's really tightly connected to the profile itself, and uh, it's really hard to customize. And then the proposed solution, what this session is about, is to create the installation wizard. So first of all, the pros is you can optionally ask users to use it, so you don't force. You, have, you can have it in completely separate module, just a sub-module of your module, and if you want, enable it, and then it will help you to install. If you don't want, just don't do it. Then uh, it provides more user involvement and interaction just for your Drupal installation. So it will not cover like the whole uh, options that exist in the world. It will just show you the options from your Drupal installation. 
And uh, yeah, it, it can also not only install the configuration. For example, the commerce module requires not only configuration to be made. For fully functional shop, you will have to create the store entity. You will have to add currencies. You will have to create product types, order item types, and in the end, just create product because you want to see it, how it works, and just to start using the shop, you need products. And of course, it has negative parts because uh, it's really hard to define the steps that will be needed for everyone because the how you use the modules is really up to you. And of course, the complexity during the implementation is really hard for developer to make it again user friendly. So. Not user-friendly installation wizard is also bad. <laughs> Maybe it's better even than not have it at all. So let's check what competitors have. Uh, as you know, Dries always likes to compare Drupal to WordPress and says like that WordPress is not so good because Drupal is so powerful and blah, blah, blah. But I would like him maybe to see these slides. So they are taken from official WooCommerce documentation, so it's not mine. But just to show, just after installing the WooCommerce, it gives you this installation wizard, and it has only four steps. First one is just asks you what location you have. So in terms of Drupal Commerce, it just creates the store entity for you. Then it just asks some other questions. On the second step, enable payment methods that you have. Third one, Enable shipping settings. And the fourth one, some <clears throat> recommendations like, I don't know, MailChimp or SEO stuff. And the last one is just final that says like, yeah, okay, you did it. Will you, would you like to create some products? Already here, just ask, create some products from CSV file even. So, what modules would benefit from having this wizard? Of course, the example commerce module. It's really huge, really big one. It needs a lot of configuration, need a lot of uh, content even to be installed just in the beginning. Also, the simple one, metadex. So you install the module and you just want to add, I don't know, one field to show your post really nice in Facebook. You need this OG uh, type of the metadex. But they are not there. You just install the module, and then you have to go to uh, node uh, content type, fields, add this field, then to show it on the uh, manage display in the form. So why, why to do this? Because anyway, it can create for you this type of the field and add to your uh, content type. Then some modules like uh, scheduled updates. So if you just want to publish at some point of time your note, why would you need to do so many steps to cover this operation? Then editor filters and plugins. So you install the plugin that adds three columns in your seek editor. But you install the module, but it's not enabled in the seek editor. You just need to go there to all your uh, text formats and do this manually. And of course, all other modules, I think it would be really nice that all modules have this. So this should be mostly in core. So what instruments do we have to achieve this? First of all, we have Drupal API, so like form API and uh, controllers, Ajax and whatever. Then we have contrib modules, of course like inline entities that will help. And also, <laughs> the last one is, yeah, banana. Um, so I made some overview of the modules that will help us to create this. So first of all, this form API is just from core. Then C tools that we already forgot, maybe from Drupal 7. There is an also nice module form steps. Then workflow-based solutions like uh, checkout done in commerce. And also, sometimes it would be helpful to have the tour module. So it's already in core, but everybody 
just ignore it always. But it also can help. So uh, what we have for multi-step form API, I will not just go deeply in details, just maybe check these links if you want. Uh, they will help to you to create the forms, not only for the installation wizards, but also nice ones. Then uh, this C-Tools solution. If you check C-Tools, now it has the... Uh, Inside has a class for form wizard base that will help you to create some multi-steps forms that will just automatically create you the entity. So uh, this was widely used in entity browser module up, up till uh, version 1.2. So because it has really huge configuration form and it was uh, split into separate steps. So the user can easily create the uh, setting for this entity browser. I, I hope everybody used this. So it, uh, C Tools Wizard just unites the forms, any forms that you want, into get operations. You just said like, I want first step, I don't know, some general question, then interact with uh, your result, and you just give the step by step what you want to achieve. Then another module is called Form Steps. Uh, it was introduced last year in the Drupal uh, Europe. And it has really nice UI to create the content forms chains. So you can create, I want uh, one form to be created on first step, another node on another step, or other content entity. But unfortunately, it doesn't support config entities yet, but they have it in the roadmap. So they want to do this, and also they don't support custom forms. That's really pity that this installation wizard could benefit from that one also. But form steps are really nice for content creation. So it would be really beneficial for the commerce module to allow you to first create the store, then create the currencies that you want, then create the product, and whatever. Uh, Another good solution is to use inline entity forms, like Commerce does it. Commerce module really likes it, and it uses in Drupal 7 and also in Drupal 8. And now, starting from the Commerce 2.13, they have um, this really nice inline form manager. So there is a service that allows you to wrap the complete form just in one form element. Uh, I already created the issue, and uh, uh, I would like Boyan maybe to help us to move this functionality to separate contrib module, so other modules can benefit from it without depending on commerce itself. So we can use it everywhere in just creating custom forms and wrapping the complete form of content. Or so the biggest advantage of inline entity forms that it doesn't only use content entities. So you can wrap any other form, just normal custom form or config form or whatever you like. So if you check the example, how the billing information pane is made in checkout. So it has, so I hope everybody knows what commerce checkout is and saw it in the uh, user experience, but so mostly it's just the content entity form that creates for you the profile. And how it's done in commerce, it just creates you the entity itself, and then with inline form manager wraps it into one element in the billing information that just has only one option except for the parents, of course, in line form. And when you check it inside, you will see the complete form from the entity. So you don't need to even implement the custom logic to, to, to have it working. And also, this inline form manager has the plugins, so you can wrap any other form inside this wrapper. And it has these three main methods that it provides. 
it's built in line form. You can also like build the form and then do some modifications if you want. Then it also has validator and of course submit form. And after it does all this submission inside this plugin, it then passes the value to the main form and the main form also goes further with already value that you have created or edited. That is really also important. Then coming to the end, like be the best solution for creating the inline uh, for installation wizard. Of course, we can combine all pluses from all the methods that I overviewed. So what we need? Of course, we need content entities, we need config entities, and of course, we need custom forms. Because configuration is of the, some modules can be really complicated, and you need to ask a lot of questions to make it super easy. Then, of course, we need ability to skip the steps. For example, if you don't have payment gateways yet, or you didn't decide you want to skip the step, because you have nothing to install. Then, of course, you want to pass arguments to the forms. Because sometimes, for example, content entity form, and you want to say, I want just exactly this node with ID 3 to be there in this form. And of course, you want next previous steps. For some uh, solutions, it would be nice to have the uh, progress bar, of course, so you just see how much is left. And of course, confirmation, the success page, it's really obvious, yes. And I want to show the example how it could be done or achieved based on my module because I also want to implement this and I started this session only because I wanted to do this in my module. So uh, this advanced insert view provides the CKDR plugin and the filter that can wrap the view inside your CKDR. It's just the advanced version of insert view that was really widely used in Drupal 7 and now in Drupal 8. But it has some benefits that I want to describe. So what should we do to achieve the better experience? First of all, we need to somehow notify the user that you have an option to install, to use installation wizard. So that could be achieved with the message uh, region that we have always, just normal standard Drupal messages. Then, um, particularly for this module, you need to ask what text formats you want to add the filter and the plugin. Then, depending on the selected options, you just loop through them and open the edit form of each filter that you selected. And then, of course, the final step, just to set the flag that you already done the installation wizard and you don't need to run it again and not notify and annoy the user in messages. So, my proposal how you can show the message. So, there is nice hook requirements in installation, in install file that you can just run on runtime and then said like, if you have permission to administer filters, just show the message that there is the installation wizard. And then also we can create the state that will say like, if you already done, then it will not be shown. Uh, then the next step is uh, to show what filters you really have, and then you just select and do next. And then the third step is to show the configuration form, of course. So, for example, in my module, we have the configuration for the plugin itself and for the filter itself. And the fourth step, I just wanted to show how you use it. So. For example, the old module was just showing in the seek editor the short tag of the view equals view name equals display name equals arguments. And in my module, it just shows you the preview of the view. And when you want to add it in the right, you see how you just click on the button in the seek editor and you can choose the view. And if you have even arguments in the view, you can do them in the user-friendly way, just with autocomplete and whatsoever. And if you have questions, you can ask our main developer in our company. <laughs>
Ніколи немає питань? Артем, дякую за вашу презентацію. Я б хотів запитати, як ви оцінюєте кількість роботи, які потрібно зробити, щоб отримати ваші цілі? Mm, yes, how many times do you yeah. uh, <laughs> thank and, you for the uh, question and uh, the second question uh, how uh, uh, do you uh, 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 how are you going to um, uh, in, <laughs> involve uh, community uh, in uh, work on your module thank mm -hmm. you so um as you have seen, I already created the issue for commerce guys. If, if it's possible to move this inline form manager, I think it's, it would be a good solution. And um, yeah, it would be nice to have this functionality in core, of course, but it's really hard to do this because it's really hard to convince all everybody that it's needed. So I think it will just land first in contrib module that will depend on the newly created, I hope, inline for manager, and maybe some C2 solution will also help. So uh, for the first version that will be just MVP, I think um, at least one week will be needed when everything is done, of course, so not, not to depend on commerce. Uh, yeah, and I hope to involve some other guys, maybe you all, like, so please feel free to contact me on drupal.org or just visit our website, there is my email and you can just write if you want to help me to, to make Drupal easy and maybe to attract more users to use it. So just we can benefit from it and not only WordPress would be user friendly but Drupal too. Thank you, there are questions. No, we thank you very much, Artem. Дуже було цікаво. І... І ще я всіх запрошую на кава брейк, буде 20 хвилинна перерва, а потім завітайте до нас, буде дуже цікава доповідь про як